In the past many programs, we have introduced you to the basic situation of the major ancient civilizations of mankind. In the following videos, we will gradually discuss some deeper issues for you in more depth. Today's Middle East is known as the world's tinderbox because there are many conflicts and crises there, such as the Syrian civil war, the Iranian nuclear issue, the confrontation between Israel and Palestine, the proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran, Turkey's intervention, as well as terrorism and the threat of extremism. These issues not only affect peace and stability in the Middle East, but also affect the interests and security of countries around the world. In this issue, let's start with the stories of the civilizations in Mesopotamia. We often hear the names of Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian, Assyrian, Elamite and other cultures. So there are some differences between these cultures. What kind of relationship? In fact, these cultures are all branches of the same Mesopotamian civilization. Civilization and culture are two interrelated but different concepts. Simply put, civilization refers to the historical form formed at a certain stage of human development, including the basic composition of culture. Culture refers to the specific existence mode of a certain civilization and the practice method of civilization. Culture reflects people's way of life and is reflected in people's customs, beliefs, art, values, etc. Civilization reflects the level of human progress, which is reflected in people's laws, science, industry, cities, etc. Cultures can be of many kinds, and civilizations can be high or low. Culture can exist independently, but civilization needs the support of culture. Culture can be spread through learning, and civilization needs innovation to develop. There are many cultural branches of Mesopotamian civilization, which can be roughly divided into the following categories according to different regions, times and ethnic groups. Sumerian culture, it is the source of Mesopotamian culture and developed in the southern Mesopotamia from 400 BC to 2000 BC. The Sumerians created cuneiform writing, city-state systems, myths and legends, mathematical systems, etc., which had a profound impact on later generations. The Sumerians lived in the lower reaches of Mesopotamia. Between 3200 BC and 2350 BC, more than a dozen city-states were established. In the early stage, they were managed by councils. By 3000 BC, these city-states had become monarchies. They never established a unified country. The Sumerians mastered bronze smelting and irrigation technology, cultivated wheat, and invented cuneiform writing, a hieroglyphic writing-like oracle. Ur in Sumer is one of the oldest cities in the world, and Abraham in the Bible is from Ur migrated to Israel. Wheat and bronze smelting were later introduced eastward to China through the Central Asian steppes. Akkadian culture, it is the first imperial culture of Mesopotamian culture, which developed in the central Mesopotamia from the 24th century BC to the 22nd century BC. The Akkadians were a Semitic tribe who conquered the Sumerians and fused Sumerian and Akkadian cultures together, forming the basis of Mesopotamian culture. Sargon of Akkad, 2370-2315 BC, became the king of Kish through a coup and conquered surrounding city-states to form the first empire. The language of Akkadian belongs to the Semitic language family, and Hebrew and Arabic both belong to the Semitic language family. Due to backward governance technology, he led a professional army of 5,000 people to patrol among various city-states to maintain the rule of the empire. Babylonian culture, it is an important branch of Mesopotamian culture, which developed in the central Mesopotamia from the 18th century BC to the 6th century BC. The Babylonians inherited the culture of the Akkadians and developed their own code of laws, astronomy, architecture, etc. Babylonian culture is divided into Old Babylonian culture and Neo-Babylonian culture, the latter being the last glorious period of Mesopotamian culture. Hammurabi of Babylon, 1792-1750 BC, reunited the two river basins and called himself King of the Four Parties of the World. He improved his governance techniques, appointed administrators, and collected taxes from conquered areas. The language of Babylon was also Semitic. Pan Gung moved to Ein roughly in 1320 BC, 
and Hammurabi was about 400 years earlier than Pan Gum. The earliest known oracle bone inscriptions appeared after Pan Gum moved to Eden. The famous code of Hammurabi, cast on a bronze pillar, is a severe punishment law like the laws of Qin. It is based on the principle of homogeneous revenge, and the idiom a tooth for a tooth, an eye for an eye, comes from this. The Babylonian Empire was destroyed by the Hittites from the north. The language of the Hittites belongs to the Indo-European language family, and English, Greek, Latin, Iranian, Sanskrit, and Tocharian belong to the Indo-European language family. Assyrian culture, it is a powerful military culture of Mesopotamia culture, which developed in northern Mesopotamia from the 19th century BC to the 7th century BC. The Assyrians were a Semitic-speaking people who established a huge empire and ruled the entire Western Asia. The Assyrian culture was mainly military, political, and religious, and also absorbed the achievements of other Mesopotamian cultures. Iron and wheel technology matured among the Hittites, who developed iron weapons and horse-drawn chariots. The Assyrians in the upper Mesopotamia borrowed iron tools and chariot technology from the Hittites. Assyria's heyday was from the 8th century BC to the 7th century BC. It unified the two river basins and conquered today's Syria, Palestine and Egypt, expanding the territory of the empire to its largest extent. The Assyrians established a library in the palace at Nineveh, from which many of the documents seen today come from. Technologies such as iron tools and horse-drawn chariots were later spread to China through the Central Asian steppes. New Babylon, Neo-Babylonia, 600 BC, 550 BC, had a brief revival after the collapse of the Assyrian Empire. King Nebuchadnezzar, had a beloved concubine for whom he built the famous Hanging Garden, which is hailed by Westerners as one of the Seven Wonders. Therefore, the terracotta warriors and horses are called the Eighth Wonder. Elamite culture, it is a marginal culture of Mesopotamia culture, which developed in eastern Mesopotamia from the 27th century BC to the 6th century BC. The Elamites were an Iranian-speaking people who had complex interactions with other civilizations in Mesopotamia, including warfare, trade and cultural exchanges. The culture of the Elamites was characterized by metal craftsmanship, temple architecture, and symbols of royal power. The above are some of the main branches of Mesopotamian culture. Of course, there are other smaller civilizations, such as Gudian culture, Chaldi culture, Mitanni culture, etc., which are also part of Mesopotamian culture. But its influence is not as great as the aforementioned culture. The location of the branch of Mesopotamia roughly corresponds to today's West Asia region, and the countries involved include Iraq, Iran, Syria, Turkey, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, Lebanon, etc. The ethnic groups in these countries are mainly Semites, Iranians, Kurds, Turks, etc. Their language, religion, culture, etc. are all influenced by Mesopotamian culture and also have their own characteristics and development. So Arabs, Hebrews, Assyrians, Babylonians, Akkadians, Ethiopians, Somalis, what is the relationship between them? Arabs, refers to people who speak Arabic or its dialects, mainly distributed in the Arabian Peninsula, Egypt, Sudan, Somalia and other places in West Asia, North Africa, and East Africa. The Arabs' religion is mainly Islam, with some followers of Christianity and Judaism. The history of the Arabs can be traced back to the ancient Arabs in the 2nd millennium BC. They were nomadic tribes who later gradually formed different kingdoms and empires. Arab culture is characterized by poetry, literature, architecture, art, science, etc., and is also influenced by ancient Egyptian, Persian, Greek, Roman, Indian, Chinese and other cultures. The heyday of the Arabs can be considered the period of the Abbasid dynasty, from the 8th to the 10th century AD. The population of the Abbasid dynasty is estimated to be about 40 million, and its territory reaches 11 million square kilometers, including most of West Asia, North Africa, and Europe. Hebrews, refers to people who speak Hebrew or its dialects, mainly distributed in West Asia, 
North Africa and Europe such as Israel, the United States, France, Russia and other places. The religion of the Hebrews is mainly Judaism, but there are also some followers of Christianity and Islam. The history of the Hebrews can be traced back to the ancient Hebrews in the second millennium BC. They were nomadic tribes and later gradually formed the two kingdoms of Israel and Judah. The culture of the Hebrews is characterized by the Bible, literature, music, art, philosophy, etc., and is also influenced by ancient Egyptian, Babylonian, Assyrian, Persian, Greek, Roman and other cultures. The heyday of the Hebrews can be considered the period of King Solomon, that is, the 10th century BC. King Solomon's population is estimated to be about 2 million, and his territory covers an area of 100,000 square kilometers, including parts of Western Asia. Assyrians, refers to people who speak Assyrian or its dialects, mainly distributed in Iraq, Syria, Turkey and other places in West Asia. The religion practiced by the Assyrians was the Mesopotamian religion, which was a polytheistic religion that worshipped many different gods. The history of the Assyrians can be traced back to the ancient Assyrians in the second millennium BC. They were some farming tribes and later gradually formed the powerful Assyrian Empire. Assyrian culture is characterized by cuneiform writing, code, mythology, astronomy, mathematics, architecture, art, etc. It is also influenced by Sumerian, Babylonian, Elamite, Persian and other cultures. The heyday of the Assyrians can be considered the period of the New Kingdom of Assyria, from the 9th to 7th centuries BC. The population of the Assyrian New Kingdom is estimated to be around 5 million, and its territory reaches 1 million square kilometers, including most of West Asia, North Africa and Eastern Europe. Babylonians refers to people who speak Babylonian or its dialects, mainly distributed in Iraq, Syria, Kuwait and other places in West Asia. The history of the Babylonians can be traced back to the ancient Babylonians in the second millennium BC. They were some farming tribes and later gradually formed the glorious Babylonian Empire. The heyday of the Babylonians can be considered the period of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, that is, the 6th century BC. The population of the Neo-Babylonian Empire is estimated to be about 10 million, and its territory reaches 500,000 square kilometers, including parts of West Asia and North Africa. Akkadians, refers to people who speak Akkadian or its dialects, mainly distributed in Iraq, Syria, Turkey and other places in West Asia. The history of the Akkadians can be traced back to the ancient Akkadians in the 3rd millennium BC. They were nomadic tribes who later gradually formed the first Mesopotamian Empire. The heyday of the Akkadians can be considered the period of the Akkadian Empire, from the 24th to the 22nd century BC. The population of the Akkadian Empire is estimated to be around 5 million, and its territory covers 800,000 square kilometers, including most of Western Asia. Ethiopians refers to people who speak Amharic or its dialects, mainly distributed in Ethiopia, Eritrea and other places in East Africa. The history of the Ethiopians can be traced back to the ancient Ethiopians in the first millennium BC. They were some farming tribes and later gradually formed the powerful Ethiopian Empire. The heyday of the Ethiopians can be considered the period of the Kingdom of Aksum, from the 1st to the 10th century AD. The population of the Kingdom of Aksum is estimated to be around 5 million, and its territory covers 1.2 million square kilometers, including parts of East Africa and Southern Arabia. Somalis, refers to people who speak Somali or its dialects, mainly distributed in Somalia, Djibouti, Kenya, Ethiopia and other places in East Africa. The history of the Somalis can be traced back to the ancient Somalis in the 1st millennium BC. They were nomadic tribes who later gradually formed different kingdoms and sultanates. Somali culture is characterized by Somali writing, poetry, literature, music, art, etc., and is also influenced by ancient Egyptian, South Arabian, Persian, Indian, Arabic and other cultures. The heyday of the Somalis can be considered the period of the Ajlan Sultanate, from the 13th to the 17th century AD. 
The population of the Ajlan Sultanate is estimated to be around 1 million, and its territory covers an area of 300,000 square kilometers, including parts of East Africa. The similarities between these groups include the following. Language. These peoples all speak Semitic languages or are influenced by Semitic languages. The name of the Semitic language family comes from Shem in the Bible. He is the eldest son of Noah and the ancestor of many peoples in West Asia and North Africa. According to records in the Bible, Noah had three sons, namely Shem, Ham and Japheth. They survived Noah's ark and became the ancestors of post-flood humanity. The descendants of Shem mainly lived in the Middle East and Asia, the descendants of Ham mainly lived in Africa and Egypt, and the descendants of Japheth mainly lived in Europe and Asia. Of course, these are just traditional statements and may not be completely consistent with history and reality. Semitic languages are a linguistic classification that includes Arabic, Hebrew, Assyrian, Babylonian, Akkadian, Amharic, Somali, etc. These languages share some common vocabulary, grammar, phonology and other characteristics, as well as some respective changes and developments. Semitic race refers to people who speak Semitic languages. It is a linguistic classification, not a biological classification. According to this standard, today's Arab countries, as well as Syria, Palestine, Jordan and Iraq, have Arabs as the main population structure. They can all be considered Semitic-speaking people because their mother tongue is Arabic, and Arabic is Semitic. A type of special language. However, other ethnic minorities in these countries, such as Kurds, Turks, Armenians, etc., do not speak a Semitic language as their mother tongue, so they cannot be considered Semitic-speaking people. There is still a lot of controversy and uncertainty about the origin and distribution of the Semitic race, but it is generally believed that they are closely related to Mesopotamian culture. Today, the Semitic race is mainly distributed in West Asia, North Africa and East Africa, including the above-mentioned Arabs, Hebrews, Assyrians, Babylonians, Akkadians, Ethiopians, Somalis, etc. The Semitic race has rich diversity in language, religion, culture, etc., and has also had an important impact on world civilization. Religion, these people believe in or are influenced by Abrahamic religions. The Abrahamic religions refer to the three major monotheistic religions with Abraham as their common ancestor or prophet, namely Judaism, Christianity and Islam. These religions share some common beliefs, stories, rituals, etc., as well as some respective doctrines and branches. History, these groups once lived in Mesopotamia or were influenced by Mesopotamian culture. Mesopotamia refers to the ancient civilization in Mesopotamia. It is one of the earliest civilizations of mankind and the birthplace of the Semitic race. Mesopotamian culture created cuneiform writing, code, mythology, astronomy, mathematics, architecture, art, etc., which had a profound impact on later civilizations. I hope this video can give you a new and clear understanding of the cultural branches of Mesopotamia. Dear friends, thank you for watching and accompanying us. We hope that through the Civilization series of video programs, we can all gather here, with a humble heart, to trace the footprints of ancient human civilizations and appreciate their charm and splendor. Learn together, make progress together, gain insight into the past, and foresee the future.